So last class we have done up to uh, concatenation of the parameterized query can be done in two ways. One is by using the str command, another one is using the percentage symbol. str is only for single statements you can use it, but when it comes as a multiple query, when we pass through Python, actually it will be divided into different types of, I mean, level one query, level two query, and then only it will get executed. So that cases our str command cannot be used. So the alternative way to use is this format, percentage format or the curly bracket format. Curly bracket format is nothing but a format string format. Percentage is also similar to format string, but a small change we can do with this. Using these two, we can do multiple queries. Multiple queries means more than one conditions we can have it. So here in this example, we can see that this is a single query with the STR object we have used. But if I need multiple, here only I'm searching the employee number. Whereas if I want employee number with the name starting with something, then I cannot go for these kinds of query. Instead of that, I can use this symbol, percentage symbol. While passing the percentage, the variable must be of tuple, list, etc. So to create a single tuple, we are using this as a single variable with comma. And one more thing what we have to remember. See here, I have the query with uh, what I can say, percentage yes with fetch one. One more I will show you. Yeah. Here we are having it as multiple query. That is more than one condition we have. You can see here, we are searching the department as well as with the starting of the salary. So if I give the department as IT and salary greater than 5,000, only those people present above that will be displayed. We can give D comma S is enough. S comma won't send any error, but need not to be there. Here in this format, you can see the percentage yes here will be in course, whereas here it will not be in course. Though it is a string, department is a string, when you just pass the string as it is, it will get This program, instead of using the percentage symbol, the curly bracket, this is one of the most advantageable format even for easy also, the way of working will be easy with this format. But whichever convenient we can take. And one more advantage is this can be used in all our uh, runtime. We are actually using dynamic inputs. We are getting it and displaying the outputs. So either curly bracket or percentage can be used. In the curly bracket, even you can give some alias names and then enter or just empty bracket is enough to substitute the value. So here you can see format. This is the for curly bracket. It is actually the format command. So format E. The value present in the E will be substituted in the employee number. Since employee number is an integer, you need not to mention anything. Just the curly bracket is enough. See? The place employee number is equal to leave that curly bracket and then go for format E. So the, whatever the value we are passing in E will be substituted here and we'll get the output. And last class itself I said, even here we can give fetch char. But since the employee number is a primary key, definitely only one will be there. So it's enough to give fetch one. The next one here, multiple commands with the formatting. What we are doing is we are trying to accept the department as well as the salary. So select either way you can write. You can straight away write the query inside. Suppose you feel the query is uh, very lengthy, assign in a variable and then go for it. See here, here the alias name is given. It is not mandatory. You can even just put single quotes, curly bracket, close curly bracket. Why quotes is required if it is a string format? Compulsory course is required. Once it comes there, you can see format will contain DEPD is equal to D, comma, uh, salary is equal to yes. So one another way to write, but even without aliases names, it will work. 
So we here we are getting the record and displaying the record in the format using the curly bracket. Now how to insert update operations that can be done. Yes, we can do it, but only thing, remember this query is compulsory. For any data we are adding or modifying, at the end we have to give commit. Then only it will be permanently stored in our SQL. So this command is compulsory, my connection dot commit. Till the time it will not be stored inside the file, the moment we give commit, all the data will be permanently written in our table. So let us see one example for that. This is an example for inserting data. Our database name is company. Different ways we can write. As I said, you can mention the database here or in the next line, you can say create a database a company if not exist. That means if the database is not present, it will create. Otherwise, it will use the same database. Once you have created, you have to give the use database. Whereas here in this program, I am assuming that we have opened our SQL server and created the database company and given, and then we are doing it. It's all up to us. Now the cursor object is created. Then we have started getting the input. See the input, the way how it is substituted. It is in the format way we are doing it. For zero, first column, the employee number will be stored. Second column, employee name will be stored. Third column, department. Fourth column is for salary. After doing it, we are executing the query. The query will be um, going to be stored, but it's not at permanently written. The MIDA commit will permanently write the record. Like that, each one we can get it and we can commit the record so that it will be permanently added. This is for updating the query. That is for already, if it is present, what you will do? Just a combination of the program only. Previous program, we have done how to search an employee number. So we are getting the employee number, executing it. If not present, we will say it is not present. Otherwise, yes means, see, once again, I'm asking for the values and then just commit automatically, it will be changed. That's all. And uh, this is the way the questions can come if I take the previous years of the papers. Usually in our school and other things, we will ask them to write a program. But board exam, the model the previous year, not this year term two, the previous year 2020 paper, case study questions came in my SQL. So how the questions can be there? No, it's like a case study which is asking you to help the person to do something with our MySQL. So here import what should come. So here it should come as MySQL.connector. Then MySQL.connect host is equal to what is the name of the host. Always it is local host. Dash is to create the cursor. How will you create a cursor? MI is equal to MySQL.cursor. Then uh, the statement to run the query to select list of employees. How will we write? So my MI dot execute within bracket select asterisk from uh, table name. Whatever the table name is given that we will use it. So other things are there to print the total number of records fetch to one. Again, what should come? What is the command to fetch the records? Anyone? The command used to find out number of records we display. Three commands were used for fetching the data. One is called fetch one, fetch all, fetch many. One command will help us to display the number of records, how much the execute query executed. That will come. What is the name of that syntax? No idea. 
anyone can tell how to find out the number of records searched by SQL. What's the comment for that? And even we said that that will be of uh, all the records will be passed as chapel. And there are three types of commands to fetch the data. So one is called as the fetch one, fetch all, fetch many. And this will give you the number of rows which will get executed by the command. What is the command for that one? To print the total number of records fetch. Is it record set? Row count. The answer is row count. Row count will give you the number of records fetched. See here. So yesterday's this program, the error what I have put is here, I left out the percentage with the single quotes. Why I said this percentage, sorry, single quote should be there? Anybody? Why there should be a single quotes for single quotes or double quotes for department, whereas it is not required for salary? Anyone? Whatever I said, I, I hope it I was uh, I am audible with you. Am I right? This code is required whenever we are passing the strings as parameter to denote it is a string. We should use the quotations. Whereas for integers, only the percentage yes is enough. For numeric data, percentage yes is enough. For string data. The percentage yes should be enclosed within single quotes or double quotes. It's mandatory. Now I am executing the coding. You can see the output. Enter the departments to be searched. ET. I'll write it as 400. You can see the output will come with that values. These are the two people, those who are under IT department with the values greater than the salary, whatever I have given. Is it clear? This program here, we are using our curly braces. So using this, if you are doing it, we can, this is an alternative method. Nothing else is an alternative method. And once again, whenever there is a string format, we are supposed to put a single quotes or a double quotes. And then we can start displaying it. I'll just interchange these uh, screens. Otherwise, I will find difficult. One minute. Because it's hiding my answers. Yes. Now it is easy for me. So here we are having single department is single quotes. And then salary will not be there with any quotes. The reason is salary is in integer format, whereas department is in the format of string. So what I have done is I have stored it in variable and then I may sorry sorry Let's keep on having some uh, this one I'm sorry trying my best from comparing to yesterday today too much of unstable Okay, uh, 
Are you able to see the screen and what I explained? Yes, ma'am. We are seeing the screen, ma'am. What I explained all you had was again I have to tell. That is here. The quotation mark is compulsory for the department. The reason is it's a tree. And these are the two different ways of getting input dynamically from the user. So that's one of the biggest advantage of this program. Okay. So the next one, what we are going to do is, I said even we can give aliases names. You want, we can give some aliases names here. How to give the allies name? No, you just see, I can give DE. Sorry, I write in lower case. DE and salary. Give it as SA. In case you are giving, going to give this allies name, then here you have to say DE is equal to, it is not mandatory. SA is equal to yes. So we can execute this. Again, the same thing. I'll put change for a change HR department. I'm writing small value so that we'll get out. So this way also we can represent our coding. So these options we give it to the children. They will select their own, whichever is convenient for them. Some of them will be innovative. So they may want to try something different. So single program is written in different ways. That's the only thing we have done. Same searching, same display of output, but the output is written in different ways of coding. One is by using percentages, another one is using formal string. Under the formal string itself, we have written in two ways. One is just the empty bracket, another one is by using giving an aliases names. So these different ways we can write the same kind of coding. The next program, what we are going to see, is one minute, I'll take, uh, this is totally 13 programs, I have kept it. Ninth program we are doing. Ninth over, I believe. Yeah, ninth over, tenth, sorry. All whatever I explained is the what is given in my slide. I'm just showing it such a live demo. That's it. this screen. So here we will just check it out with whether we can what happens if we are going to enter wrong or department. So I'll just put H and then for something. You can see the empty data has come. That means it is not present. So it's not accepting that. Since the this one is not there, we are not getting it. That even we can give with our query. I start the execute query. So yes, the job. And if data is none, we can this. Otherwise, it's going to print this one. That's it. Now the next program. Next is I think using uh, input I believe. I'll just check it out. What program? Final program will be our uh, converting database to SQL, sorry, CSV file. Before that, we will insert some data, update some data. All that we'll do it. Too many files. Just give me a few minutes time here. A lot of files are open. So this is our program for CSV, just an interesting one. This is not given in our slides presentation, but I am using it. See here, I have created same coding, same example I have taken. That is searching for a department and displaying the output. I use the format command. 
after fetching the data, up to fetch all the same program what we have done earlier. Now here starts, flag is for suppose if the record is not present, we can give with the message saying no records are found. So here I am opening my CSV file. And you know that CSV by default will create a new line. To suppress the line, I have put new line is equal to nil. That is without anything. Now after that, I am writing inside and then write rows will write all the rows, whatever is present or whatever we have taken. Then once again, we are starting. If nothing is present, you are going to say no record found. Otherwise, start reading the CSV file, display the output. So let us see the output of this. Same thing. I'll put it as that same ID and uh, 200. You will see the output. See? And you want, you can check the CSV file is present in the uh, folder wherever we have created. Suppose if I'm going to give wrong output, I mean wrong input, then it will say no record found. See here, I'm putting this. No record found. So that no Every now and then it is going. I'm extremely sorry. From tomorrow onwards, this problem won't be there. See this cursor, CO is equal to I of zero for I in my cursor dot description. This is called as what? List comprehension. You want, you can write in list comprehension. Or we can, suppose we haven't taught to the children list comprehension, then go for saying, sorry, how to write in normal way, we will write it for I in uh, make CO as a list. First create CO a list. Same thing I am going to do. But in normal method, I am going to do that is without using list comprehension. I will make this as a this one. What is the use of this to give the heading to, to the program? I mean, top heading column names will come with this one. See here, I'll take this line. Sorry. For I in CO of description, in my description, colon, now CO plus is equal to I of that CO plus is equal to, you know, we can concatenate at least. So, like this, I can write. Instead of writing this, the advantage of this one is it will give you the heading also. First, I'll show with this and then I'll go for this. One minute. This is list comprehension. List, the advantage of list comprehension within one line they can write. But for some certain things only you have to take the list comprehension especially for accepting matrices, etc., it is useful. But your program contains too many lines of uh, to be written or executed, then list comprehension is not advisable. Sorry, I think something I missed out. Right row, I didn't write. I am very sorry. Very sorry. First, I have to write the row, otherwise how it will come. 
Kemudian the data ID 200. See, it will come with the heading. Employee name, name, department, employee number, name, department, salary, etc. So the first column usually will not come because it is not a record set. So we are taking even the heading from that by the command is description. Cursor dot description. It is not mandatory. It is not in our books. As I said, if any child is uh, willing to write a CSV program in his project, we can give all these options. Same way, if we have in, because it is list comprehension is not there for 11th standard now, sometimes we may not have taught them the list comprehension. In that case, you can use this method for executing it. Instead of list comprehension, I use the normal for loop to give the output. Hope you all are clear with this uh, program. Yes? Yes or no? Is it clear? Am I audible, ma'am? Yes, ma'am. Is it clear this coding? Any anything I have to explain here or any doubt in this? Am I supposed to zoom the coding alone? Any doubt in this? See, though the chapter is very less with mark, pro, mark purpose, it is less. The entire content we have to take, otherwise we cannot uh, explain them or give that Phillips, etc. It's very difficult for them to understand. And practicals, we have two to three questions based on this. So here, it is not mandatory to use the cursor dot description. I'm just showing you the different outputs that are. Uh, is this coding is clear? Any other doubt if it is there, please tell me. Otherwise, I'll go for the next one. See, these programs are mainly for the exceptionally good student. They want to do something different with uh, other than the normal projects, lines, whatever we are giving. Then the extra miles ahead. Okay, now I will go for one more coding. I'll take it. one second. Again, my go state is not stable. I don't know when. Right now, the program, what I am showing you is the practical program, straight program without using any format, etc. As I said, right now, it is enough. See here, we are creating the, after this, we are create, dropping the table because I have already created the table. So I have used drop table. Usually to my children means I will tell create table if not exits. Then truncate the table also, they can use it. 
but uh, as i said if the child is um, finding difficult to write coding go for simple coding this drop table is required if the table is already created otherwise no need since i have executed this program one time so i have put the drop table create the table create the table inserting data straight away this is what normally we will do then we not have anything the only difference is here the user cannot input anything they will get the output answer that's all so we are accepting something and based on the search we are going to give our output see up to this is you are inserting commands so after inserting everything 10 records it is asked in the question record program 10 records we have to accept, accept it so all the 10 over then after that it is asked to display the employee from the department so all the employee names with that it will be displayed then it is a joining command remember two tables are used details of the managers are given that's all so it's asked to display the department as well as the details of the manager so straight away it will give you the answer you not to have anything it's a merging of two tables as well as this one joining table here we are not getting any input from the user because we have already defined here in the coding itself all the values so in this format i need not to bother about percentages or curly bracket etc next program is for as i said the child who likes to do a lot we can give for them if they are interested so this is mainly for project purpose so any student is trying to do it a uh, project with a sql and they want to display the output as it is instead of going to csv etc we can go for this import tablet using tip you can import the tablet and the tablet no automatic with lines etc headers names like a description here we are giving the header what header name or under what header name we need our output and the format of the table is like py sql python sql nothing else format this is our mandatory fields so give this one and execute it or any help you want get it from the ah oh, sorry sorry table employee what happened not present a so oh, i think i have created the table i am sorry i will once again what i will do i will delete the table otherwise it will give me error because already i have created the table so i'll put here as b dot where b is nothing but my cursor b dot drop table so b dot execute drop table name is employee one motion so there that's why most of command line arguments will be format of strings i just want a clarification whether you are able to see two screens or one screen because i closed my shell window or i will once again stop and do one second it will be easy so this one now run the table employee number 3 records for our convenience i have put so first one employee name is ram sorry ram um department is it salary is next employee number 2 lakshman lax department hr salary 45000 
employee number three. Three records I have given just to show you the table format. Even that also we can go for, do you want to continue, etc. Name is Lakshman Bharat. IT. See how it is appearing. So this they copy in the output in the word and little adjustment they do it. No, it looks like exactly how the table appears. So just they have to import this module and uh, a project they can do straight away writing in the SQL and displaying the output through Python. Very simple project this will be. All the project should contain a menu. All the manipulation should be there and one file handling or a database connection. So this will be useful. Am I clear in all my content? Any doubt? Oh With that, our SQL is getting over. So if at all any doubts, you can tell. Are the different kinds of questions or do you SQL actually board exam point of view questions are very less. A theoretical question difference between fetch one and fetch all because fetch many is not there. Whereas in our viva types of questions can be asked is how many parameters are used for the connection. Actually there are four parameters the host, user, password and database is an optional parameter. They can very well tell like that. And if we can even ask if the database is already present, oh, sorry, if the table is already present, then if I give create table, what happens? Error will be thrown. So to avoid the error, what we have to give is drop table. Other than these questions, Uh, so I will use uh, the program and didn't put that. What I can say is our commit statement. So for insert and update, compulsory commit must be there. Otherwise, it will throw error. Same way, every time if it is over, they can close and disconnect the content. All this, they can do it. And if the student is with and write as a story in what I can say in a database that is by through my SQL and then from the SQL write into CSV with some manipulation. For example, there are five records in the binary file for employee. Read it and store all the five records in the SQL database, SQL table. Then from the table, Select only the people present in the department IT and store it in CSV. Now you are integrating binary SQL CSV using Python. That is the greatest advantage. Further, you want to increase means take set of data that is for mainly project. In the CS using the CSV, they can create a chart and show the analysis, like many people have taken the project as COVID analysis, et cetera. In that case, they can go. They need to go for pipeline. They can even do through CSV. These are the advantages what is present in our MySQL. I hope.